now. Right now, healthcare providers have thousands of COVID-19 antivirals they can't use, and some countries are desperate to get them. Our ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is going in depth to explain the red tape that's standing in the way. About 1,200 miles from Australia, there's a chain of islands that had been virtually untouched by COVID until last month. The Solomon Islands is now in the middle of a surge so intense, the government has been posting instructions on social media on what to do with bodies. There are no enough spaces, and now with the death toll increasing, there will be no uh, spaces to bury the dead. Esther Nuria is a journalist for Solomon Star News. She says the Solomons have been dealing exclusively with the Delta variant, making it one of the last places on Earth where Omicron hasn't taken over, and their hospitals have few tools to to fight it. When it comes to any antibodies uh, to treat uh, patients with COVID, no, there is not nothing like that on the ground here. Here in refrigerators in San Diego and across California, there are life-saving monoclonal antibodies that work against Delta and clinics cannot use them. Right now we're just kind of sitting on them because we're pretty confident they are not going to work at all for Omicron. Last month, the FDA paused the use of antibody cocktails from Eli Lilly and Regeneron when Omicron took over and told providers to use other COVID treatments instead. Unfortunately, we can't donate these drugs to other countries countries. We can't even send them to our other University of California members. UC San Francisco's Desi Cotis says all these antibody drugs, like the vaccines, were purchased by the federal government. And by law, the federal government controls their distribution. Last year, UCSF was part of an effort that tried to convince federal officials to let them donate vaccines that were at risk of expiring a few weeks later to other countries. But CODIS says the situation with these antibody treatments is different. Back when we talked, the expirations were very short. With the Lilly Regeneron antiviral products, those expirations are much longer. The antibody drugs from Eli Lilly and Regeneron can be kept in a refrigerator for up to 18 months. They're also much more expensive than vaccines. Each antibody treatment costs about $2,100. Things change, and it may be that a couple of months from now, there's another variant that it works for. That actually has already happened once, where we threw out the bamlanivimab, and, and you know it turns out that it actually did work against future variants. Federal health officials say they don't have the mechanisms in place to take these antibodies back, and they're encouraging clinics to continue storing them. The California Department of Public Health wouldn't tell us how many doses are still being stored, but we do know the state got about 27,000 doses in the three weeks before the FDA pause. UC San Francisco says it plans to send some of their 60 doses back to the manufacturer in hopes they can be used elsewhere. These drugs do uh, show promise and could be helping others versus, you know, a small amount of them sitting on the shelf. In a small country like the Solomon Islands, even a few treatments could make an outsized impact. But for now, they're not coming. Frustrating, frustrating. It's very frustrating. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. So last week, ABC 10 News sent requests to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services asking if it would consider sharing these treatments with other countries. We'll update you when we hear back.